Hi, thanks for joining me. How can you benefit from doing a presentation? Now when I ask people who's actually done a presentation, a lot of hands will go straight up. If I ask how many people have not done a presentation, a few hands go up not quite as fast and not quite as high. I think because they're probably frightened of drawing attention to themselves, wondering what I'm going to say or do. Then I say, who thinks that a person can benefit from being able to sell themselves and their services effectively to large groups of people? And all the hands go up. Now, I'm Steve Dickinson, I'm a trainer and coach, and I work with business owners and consultants who want to do what's necessary to build their business, but they're having difficulty getting their word out, getting their message across. Uh, they don't want to do presentations for fear of looking nervous or, uh, or just looking stupid, really. Now, I was a corporate trainer for 20 years. I'm a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis. And recently, I've been working with a charity called Youth at Risk to help coach children who are at risk of um, failing their exams, being excluded from school, or uh, punching their teacher in the face again. And I was doing this in conjunction with a local... Um, uh, local education authority being placed in schools and so I've uh, developed a coaching process that helps people create success in their lives. Also I help people um, with business strategies and techniques and provide templates and uh, processes to help people improve efficiency. So I help people create a, um, a quality state of mind, help them with their being, with their happiness so I've also helped people create structured presentations so they can reduce their nerves and be seen as a key person of influence within their industry. So people can hear what they've got to say, they can get their word out. I help them understand their options and create a step-by-step -step process to be able to create a presentation. Something that they know is right while they hear the praise and see the, um, the looks of admiration from their audience. So this is about how to structure a presentation, or as one of my uh, colleagues said, uh, unlocking the secrets of presentations. But this is about a marketing presentation. And I'm going to cover the three sections of a presentation, the five parts of an effective introduction, and the seven stage marketing syntax. So by the end of this session, you'll be able to use the template that you can download to be able to create a 10 minute marketing presentation to sell yourself effectively. Now, I've used this structure for uh, lectures, trainings, uh, seminars, an impromptu speech at a party, and even at a funeral. And the benefit of being able to do a presentation is you can talk to somebody one-to-one -one and you'll be able to get your point across. If you want to get your point across to 30 people, it's going to take you 30 times as long, unless you're presenting to 30 people. So a presentation is a very effective way of multiplying the amount of people that you can talk to in one go, whether it's to 30 or to 3,000. Now, the importance of, the, the, um, of a structure, I found really, really helps me with my nerves. Because I used to, I used to get bullied a bit when I was a kid, um, and uh, I show some of the signs of dyslexia. So back in the 60s, if, you know, the best way to motivate a child is to grab it, bring it up to the front of the class and ridicule the child in front of their peers. Um, yeah, way to go on the motivation. Anyway, that, that instilled in me a real fear of large groups of people all looking at me. Just didn't like it. But having a structure enabled me to, um, to forget my feelings of, uh, of worry because I knew exactly what I was going to be saying. Um, so there's three sections to a presentation. An introduction, the main body, and a summary. So effectively, you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you've told them. Because repetition is the most effective way to communicate a message. Now, an introduction really um, helps, people, helps you set people's expectations and enables them to relax a little bit. And also, it gives you the opportunity to explain what your objectives are. Why are you up there? What are you aiming to achieve by standing up there talking to them? Now, I use the um, acronym INTRO, I-N-T-R-O, Interest, Need, Title, Range, Objectives. Um, I mean, obviously, the first thing you've got to do is to get their interest. If they're not interested, they're not going to bother listening to you. 
Now, an effective method of getting their interest is to do what um, marketers and hypnotists call opening a loop. Now, this could be just as, uh, as simple as asking a question that's going to be answered later on. And it does interest me that, um, that hi a hypnotist will confuse the conscious mind by asking a question, starting a story and not finishing it, going on to something else, not finishing it, until the conscious mind is just so confused that they can talk directly to the unconscious. Directly to the unconscious mind on an emotional level. Which of course is what marketers want to do when they're trying to get their point across. They want an emotional reaction to, oh, I really want to have that. So this is the, uh, the importance of getting interest. Once you've got their interest, you can go on and explain to them why they need to listen. Why should they invest their time listening to you? What have you got to say that's of, uh, that's of use to them? And this gives you the opportunity to expand on the benefits that they're going to get by listening to you. So you've got their interest, you under, they understand why they need to listen to you. Next thing to do is to give your presentation a title. Now I'd suggest something, um, something that summarises what it is that you're trying to put across. And maybe three to five words, possibly starting up with um, how to do something, or the three key aspects of, and then explaining what you're going to be talking about. So you've got their interest, they, they know why they need to listen to you, if you've given it a title, you can then explain the range of things you're going to be discussing. Um, where are An overview of what you're going to talk about. So they know what to expect. So they can relax a little bit. They're not going, oh, well, I wonder what else he's going to, what he's going to say next. Because they already know. Then finally, you can get on to explaining what your objectives are. Now, I really think it's important to start with your objectives. What are you aiming to achieve with this particular presentation? Invariably, you want them to, to do something. You want some kind of uh, them to perform some action. Um, I mean, it might just be something as simple as changing, um, changing a, um, a state of mind or developing a new attitude. But the three aspects of, a, um, of an objective are an action, a standard, and a condition. For instance, um, yeah, I'm going to tell you about uh, my, um, my product so you can make a decision that if you want to sign up today or not. Maybe not say or not, but uh, um, a particular action to a specific standard given certain constraints. Now if you build your objective and be really, really clear about those three aspects, and there's more of this in the written notes that you can download alongside this video. So that's your, uh, your interest, need, title, range, objectives. You can now get on to the main body of your, uh, uh, of your presentation, the message that you want to get out. And it should be a subject that you know well, or something that you've researched well, um, so you can, uh, you can really get your point across effectively. Now Steve Jobs from Apple was a master at this. He would rehearse again and again and again, opening each section, closing it off, going on to the next one, um, open, you know, giving it an introduction, explaining it, closing it off. But he rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. So when he got up there, it wasn't about worrying about his performance, it was about developing that connection and, and, and uh, infusing about the products that he, he just loved, I guess. Um, now, if you're going to use PowerPoint, uh, death by PowerPoint is something I've, uh, I've experienced on a number of occasions. But if you are going to use PowerPoint, I'd suggest no more than three lines per slide and make no more than five words per line. And if you do have to use text, don't, uh, don't use more than about 30 words. Because if there's too much text up there, they're either going to be ignoring the text while they listen to you, or they're going to be ignoring you while they read the text. Now I said this was going to be about marketing, so we're now going to go into the marketing syntax. Now this marketing syntax could be used, um, it could be used standalone. It doesn't have to be used as part of a presentation. I use the same structure on my um, uh, when I stand up and do a one-minute pitch to um, to a room at a business meeting, known as the elevator pitch. If you're standing in an elevator with someone, you've got a minute to get your point across. And there's seven aspects to this. Who do you work with? What problem do they have? What makes you credible? What results do you get? What process or service or product do you have? Um, a couple of success stories and then a call to action. So first of all, who do you work with? 
Well, this proves that this, that this goes to relevance. If you're, um, if you're talking to somebody, for instance, I work with consultants. So I say, I work with consultants. If I'm talking to a consultant, they instantly think, oh, well, that, you know, this might be worth listening to. But if I was to say, I work with shoe repairers, and I'm talking to a consultant, he'd, um, I'd be able to tell from his expression that he's not really that interested. So it goes to relevance. You immediately qualify the, um, uh, the person that you're talking to to see if they're, uh, the, if they're going to be interested in your product or service. So who do you work with? Next one is, what problem do they have? What requirement do they have? Now, this, once again, this goes to relevance. If you could describe a problem in such a way that they go, oh, this guy's got, oh, this person's got an amazing insight into the difficulties I'm experiencing. They want, they want to continue to listen. Now, if you can also discuss the implications of that problem in terms of time and money, they think, well, not only does he understand my problem, but he's, he's actually, actually got an insight into the effect it's having on my business. Something I hadn't even thought of. I spend, I spend maybe a day, a week doing this. Well, it's 40 days a year. Well, over 40 days a year. That's a whole month's wages. So if you can really discuss, uh, um, define their problem and discuss, the, uh, discuss it in terms of uh, uh, cost in time and money, you're really going to have their attention. So that's who do you work with, what problem do they have? The next one is what makes you credible? What experience or knowledge or product or service do you have that enables you to be, uh, to be qualified to be able to help them solve that problem? So who do you work with, what problem do they have, what makes you credible? And then finally you can talk a little bit about your, um, your product uh, service or process that you would take someone through so they can understand what it is that you actually do. Then you can go on to the results that people get. How do you solve their problems? What, um, what, do, they get, what do they get from you that's going to get rid of the, uh, the problems that they've got, uh, save them time and increase, save them money and possibly increase their income? So once you've gone through that process of uh, who do you work with, what problem do they have, what makes you credible, what product service or uh, a process do you use, and the results that you get. You can then sort of go through a, um, a mini version of that as you give an example with some success stories. Now I suggest you have a number of success stories available that you've, um, uh, that you've, uh, you've rehearsed a few times so you know what it is you're going to say. But only use one or two that's pertinent to the person that you're talking to. Now everybody loves a story and if that, if the person that you're, you're talking about, if, uh, if there's a resonance between the person you're talking to and the person that the story's about, you can go through that same, well, this is the type of person they were, this is the problem they had, this is what we did, and these were the end results. So once again, it cre it's creating relevance and engaging them in what you do and how you can help them. And then finally, you've got your uh, call to action. Now that could be just something as simple as, well, well, give me a business card and I'll send you some information that you might find useful. Well, give me a business card and I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call and maybe we could meet up for a chat or um, a telephone call. So that's the, the main, main body of a marketing presentation. As I said, you could use that seven, um, seven stage syntax to, uh, to just use for a, um, well, just in a conversation really. As long as you go through those key aspects who do you work with, what problem do they have, what makes you credible, what's the next one, what makes you credible, what process product or service do you have, what results do they get, success stories and call to action. If you fit all of those into a conversation, and I mean, it could be a 10 minute conversation where you're flipping backwards and forwards, quite relaxed, but at the back of your mind you can be ticking off each one to make sure that you've got your message out. Okay, so that's the main body of a marketing presentation. It might not be pertinent to all presentations that you do, but the main body is where you get your message across. Finally, you've got your summary. Now, the summary is really easy if you've done an effective introduction, because all you've got to do is reiterate the things that you said you were going to um, uh, that you were going to discuss, and then restate your objectives and maybe check to make sure that you've met them. Then you can ask for questions. And I suggest questions before you finish your presentation. Because if, if you finish your presentation and then ask questions, 
Well, the power to end your presentation is put with the audience. So ask for the questions before you've finished. There might not be some, there might not be any, in which case you can carry on and finish. Or there might be a number, in which case you can handle them and then carry on and finish. Now be very specific about asking for questions and not thoughts, feelings, experiences. You can dis discuss those afterwards. Just want questions. And then once you've got your questions, you can or finish answering the questions, you can finish with a powerful, um, powerful statement uh, to keep them thinking of you. So that's the, the three stages of a presentation. Introduction, a main body, summary. I also discussed the five parts of an effective introduction of interest, need, title, range, objectives. And with regard to the marketing syntax, it was who do you work with, what, make, uh, what problem do they have, what makes you credible, what results do you get, what product or services do you have, um, success stories, and then a call to action. So if you have any questions, I mean, my objective for this is for you to be able to take the template that you can download along with the instructions and for you to be able to create um, a mind map, a picture of a presentation. So I suggest you do use, um, use colored pens so you can uh, write out, well sorry, doing it from your point of view, it would be that way, write out a sort of clock of different things for you to be able to talk about and to be able to rehearse and present your product or services in a very effective way without, without necessarily using notes. I've got notes in front of me. I've got my mind map, which you won't be able to see from, from there, or different colored pens. Um, when I get lost, I just glance down and I know I can get myself back on track. And that's why I talk about the, I emphasize the, uh, uh, the structure of a presentation. Um, so if you'd like to, f if you've got any questions, please, uh, please put them in the box, uh, ask the questions in the boxes below. If you'd like to find more about, uh, about how to craft a message to different personality types or people with different communication styles, if you'd like to find out more about hypnotic language or, or uh, body language, or find out more about the benefits of coaching, then please, once again, put, put your questions in the box below. But I'd like you to remember, success isn't where you think, it's how you think. I'm Steve Dickinson, trainer, coach and speaker. Thanks very much for listening. I've enjoyed making this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I'll see you on the next, the next video. Bye.